Hey there FTD fam, this is Khalil here uh, with another video. I am first of all uh, just really grateful for this opportunity again. It's been a bit a couple months since we've been on this journey um, together and I want to express my gratitude to the entire FTD community while we learn and while we divulge and I bring my Christian perspective on um, these situations some of them or you know the different principles of Islam um, then it is always intriguing and I just want to thank those that are leaving comments those that are sending me messages it is it's certainly appreciated and thank you for walking with me on this path uh, just to understand more I'm always down for that so I want to start out with that uh, today's video we're going to take a look at how England almost became a Muslim country that's big I'm very interested to see something like that because I feel that and as I've seen and studied that we often find religion at the core 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 structure even of um, governmental systems right um, and so to hear or to, to see how England almost became uh, a Muslim country will certainly be something very 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 appealing I, I know there's unrest like all the time uh, over there and it's so sad and unfortunate to see um, but yeah I'm, I'm curious to see where did it turn where it said nope we're not gonna go that way we're gonna go this way all right so all right guys take a look with me and we will enjoy and catch you on this side England home to the oldest monarchy in the history of the world they're known for playing Lord over half of the globe and while their victories may have brought considerable wealth to the Great Britain one allyship almost made them convert to Islam. 800 years ago, the youngest son of Henry II, John, was made the King of England mm -hmm. after his brother, Richard the Lionheart, died. With the crown came a lot of obvious benefits, but unfortunately, all King John was left with was an empty bag of wealth. Mm. His brother, Richard, was a very poor king for England, in all senses of that word. Yes. He didn't spend more than 10 months of his 10-year reign in England and drained all the money in foreign battles. Oh, no. So once John became king in 1199, he had a lot of land to defend, but no money or armed resources to do mm. so. For two years, he struggled to maintain his power at the throne and control over his assets. Wow. However, the mountain of debt came crashing down two years later. In 1202, King John lost Normandy, Maine, and almost wow. all his other possessions in France in a battle with Philip II, the French king. Right. But despite his poor status, King John had tried his best to win the war. He imposed heavy taxes on the barons I'm sorry. of England, it's the video. which put I'm them sorry. under pressure and squeezed every penny out of them. Struggling with the barons, King John somehow angered the Pope and was excommunicated out of the Whoa. church. By this time, not only had he lost the wealth, he also lost his ties to European powers. Not to mention, England was placed under an interdict by which all forms of worship and other religious practices were banned. Parts of the country were in revolt and there were threats of a French invasion. What could he possibly do now that would help him keep his throne? Find an international ally. He scoured the routes of Europe to find a ruler with a common connection. In 1212, his search landed him in Morocco. It was the only nation besides Spain and France that had both Atlantic and Mediterranean coastlines. Bingo. Wasting no time, King John secretly sent three of his best envoys to the court of Muhammad al Nasser, the fourth Al Muhad Sultan. One of the envoys was Master Robert Fitzwalter, a cleric. Here comes the good part. Master Robert negotiated with Caliph al Nasser to offer military aid to England, and in exchange, King John would not only abandon his Christian faith, oh. he would also convert to Islam and be faithful to the law of Muhammad. The stench of the king's desperation absolutely disgusted the Emir of Morocco. Oh. He suspected that a king with such low values would never amount to a strong discipline and their ties. After considerable discussion with the envoys, Al Nasser rejected the offer. All of them went home, except for Master Robert. 
he whispered to the Moroccan emir how King John was a tyrant oh. ruler, a bloodhound, and extremely poor. Impressed by his honesty, Anasa rewarded him with quite a few treasures. Blind to Robert's greed and malicious behavior, King John appreciated the envoy and gave him more gifts. However, in 1212, Robert Fitzwalter was found guilty of plotting to kill what? King John, outlawed and exiled to France. There, Robert met with Matthew Paris, an English monk. Robert supposedly opened up his heart to him and narrated the tale of King John and the Islamic oh. England. Back at King John's home, the barons found out about everything that had transpired behind their back, the treachery and the poor financial mm. planning. In 1215, <coughs> they rebelled against King John's heavy taxes mm. and brought him to heel. The Magna Carta was drafted wow. and on 15 of June, King John signed the first Bill of Rights for the United Kingdom. It basically constrained the power of everyone in the monarchy and established that no one was above mm. the law, no matter their position so of sovereignty. Clear. How did the world come to know about the tale? Well, Matthew Paris was a writer at heart and had been so intrigued by Robert's experience, he noted it down. The manuscript was published six centuries later by the name Chronica Majora. The author has been deemed as England's greatest medieval historian. Mm. Because of its antique nature, a few historians believe the tale has been exaggerated and that King John may have negotiated military aid but never offered England to be an Islamic caliphate. Modern historians recognize Matthew Paris's work wasn't always reliable. But like Shakespeare says, desperate times breed desperate measures. Given the state of King John's struggle, it's not entirely impossible that England may have become an Islamic caliphate right. had it not been for the binding treaty Magna of Magna Carta. Carta. How amazing would it have been if England had actually converted to Islam, no? History has shown time and time again how impactful the influence of the monarchy is. Islam didn't actually lose all in the 13th century. A few years later, after England's unfortunate times, a struggle broke out among the Ilkhans of the Mongol Empire. Mm. They patronized all religious persuasions, from Christians and Jews to Sunnis and Shias. Mm. Then, in 1295, a Buddhist named Mahmud Ghazan became Khan. As soon as he took the throne, Mahmud declared he had become a Muslim, which made the Mongol notables to follow the faith of Allah oh. as well. Mahmud Ghazan promoted Islamic education and fostered legendary writers like Rashid ad-Din. He was a Muslim physician, oh. a scholar, and later Mahmud's best minister who authored the world's most famous Persian universal histories. Mahmud Ghazan had single-handedly converted his whole state to Islam, oh. wow. and that's not even half of all that he is known for. The Muslim ruler loved ilm and was intrigued by the creation of Allah. He conversed with intellectuals on a variety of topics, creation from natural Allah. history and astronomy to medicine and chemistry. He also worked his hands into several handicrafts. When he wasn't learning art, the great Ghazan was winning wars. His efforts brought together the Mongols and the Persians, ended the tyranny of the Ilkhanate, introduced administrative reforms to his empire, founded a postal system, rebuilt the revenue system, and so much more. Subhanallah, faith is mind-blowing. Subhanallah. Well, there you have it, guys. That was fascinating. Guys, that was great. Um, I love seeing, and it's not just because I'm watching Game of Thrones right now, re-watching Game of Thrones for like the third, fourth, fifth time maybe. Um, but this kind of conversation always gets my wheels turning because it's one decision as opposed to another decision that just makes such a huge ripple effect, uh, ripple effects through the streams of time. King John turned away from Christianity and was excommunicated. He was a king. So, man, that's a big deal. And 
it, there, I, I jotted down a note to speak a little bit about discipline because I think King John was then criticized for not being a man of discipline and things like that because he fell so deep into um, debt and all stuff like that. Um, but this seemed to be around the time when he'd found Islam and what triggered in my mind was that what we should understand, what I hope we all understand, is that there are disciplines. I find Islam to be a very, very disciplined um, religion and it's something that I respect highly. It speaks a lot to me as a Christian, um, although our deities are different, um, I find that 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 level of commitment in terms of our lifestyle actually reflecting our belief system, um, I find that to be something that just holds so close together. And that's why, again, why I find such uh, so much respect for, for the religion and the values that it holds dear. Guys, that was great. The video put it very clearly that England almost became a Muslim country and I partially believe it. I'll tell you that much right now. All right, guys, appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching this video with me. Um, feel free to leave a comment uh, in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to catch you there, and we'll talk another time. All right, this is Khalil saying take care and be good.